Welcome to um, another Wellness Wednesday. Today we are joined uh, joined by Jason Nato. Uh, Jason is um, a licensed massage therapist and he owns Rye Therapeutic Massage in Rye, New Hampshire. Um, and he's actually been a massage therapist since 2004. So definitely not new to the game. He knows his stuff. Um, he's licensed in both Massachusetts and New Hampshire. And he's also a Reiki master and teacher. He's also taken advanced training for orthopedic massage and craniosacral therapy, which feels really nice. Even if you don't know what it is, it just, it's nice. It's a little, little, little head stuff. I'm a big fan. So today, um, Jason can talk about so many different things, but today what we're going to focus on and what he's specifically going to focus on is massage for active recovery. Um, and active recovery is usually a, a low intensity workout. Um, follow that follows a strenuous workout. So sometimes walking, yoga, swimming, um, it's much more beneficial than inactivity um, or just you know plain stretching or just resting. Um, and deep tissue massage is a fantastic um, way to get that active recovery in, especially if you don't really feel like doing anything. Jason can do the work for you. Um, some of the benefits of active recovery are reducing lactic acid buildup in your muscles, uh, eliminating toxins, keeping muscles flexible, reducing soreness, increasing blood flow, and helping you maintain your exercise routine. So I'm going to swing this over to Jason. And Jason, you can just start with a synopsis of, of what you do and why you love it, and then um, how you help athletes like myself uh, recover with massage. Well, thank you very much, Candice. And yes, always a pleasure. And uh, yes, I absolutely love working out your gym too. So, uh, so let's talk about some of the benefits of massage. So massage has a couple of primary benefits. And of course, one of them is relaxation. One of them that is often spoken of and actually not well proven is the idea that we influence changed blood flow in the body. Uh, the, the science is out on that one. Uh, we certainly see edema getting reduced from massage, or we can also see hyperemia happening where there's a bit of redness as increased blood flow comes to the tissues. But uh, the, uh, the ability for science to actually show that that's happening is not really there. Uh, it doesn't show that we're not making a difference, but it doesn't show it. Uh, but what massage does do is it helps us feel better. So it does help reduce pain. And if you just heard that, that is my cat moving around. Uh, so massage does help to reduce pain. It does reduce stress. Uh, massage does help to increase range of motion. And also massage helps to reduce risk of injury. So, and I think this is the thing that we really need to tune into with massage. So massage, getting massage in general, reduces the risk of injury and accelerates the healing from injury. Now, how do I do that? Well, I have this blend. So I actually started with Reiki in the 1990s. I then went to massage school in 2004. I went to a massage school founded by a soft rolfer. Uh, Rolfing, for those not familiar with it, structural integration, founded by Dr. Ida Rolf. Uh, it's not painful. Made, it, it certainly is known for being painful, but it doesn't have to be. No. I went to a massage school that taught so, from a soft rolfing perspective. So the massage school was founded by a soft rolfer. Uh, so not painful. I like to work within that, that comfortable of we're engaging the tissues, and you know that we're engaging the tissues, but we're not increasing the pain because one of the issues that happens and uh, with a lot of people, this is a misconception. Uh, you, you gotta work deeper to may have any effect. You gotta get, and the reality is no, I really want my client to stay engaged with the work. The research shows that by being engaged with the work, we are able to get the brain involved that actually gets more benefit. They did a really cool study a number of years ago, and uh, I don't remember when the study was done, but they did a study and it was released in the, uh, in the World Fascia Conference. 
uh, in the early 2000s where they did the study and they had someone under general anesthesia, so completely out, no nerve response whatsoever. The person's completely unconscious, like you would be put to sleep for surgery, but they've had this person, and I presume that this person was receiving some other kind of intervention, but this person, while completely out under general anesthesia, uh, they had a rolfer come in and do a full rolfing session for that person under general anesthesia. And under general anesthesia, no nerve response, the rolfer could go as deep as they wanted. So they went as deep as they could. Uh, and they showed that all of that fascia work under general anesthesia after the session, it made no difference whatsoever. It did nothing, no effect, as if they did nothing. Uh, why? I would argue it was because, and this ties back into the misconception of you got to work deeper. No, you don't. The mind-body connection. Yeah, exactly. It's getting into the mind-body connection of saying, okay, we need to engage the muscles and we need to engage the mind to change the muscles because ultimately the mind controls the muscles. The mind controls the fascia. The mind, as I was just discussing with the physical therapist earlier today, the mind also decides, is this painful? Is this not painful? How painful is it? Is this a uncomfortable level of pain? A, this really concerns me level of pain? Or is it just a, ah, it's really uncomfortable, but it's okay. Or is it a, oh my God, this is intolerable. And we can come back to that. I was gonna say, I have a question on that one. Okay. Uh, so my intention is to stay within the pain threshold for the client. So I want my clients to be able to relax into the pain. Anybody who's listening to this, uh, if you or somebody you know is getting a massage and that therapist just goes, well, we need to work deeper and we need to release this tissue and is complaining about the depth and pressure, that therapist is overworking the tissue. And if it's that painful, they are, if you're, as I tell my clients, if you're even thinking about holding your breath, it's too much. I would qualify that as assault. You do not have to work that hard. We don't have to work that hard. We, we are not actually structurally changing the tissue. Uh, as the founder of uh, Traeger, Milton Traeger says, the muscles are dumb. It's the mind I'm after. So what my intention is, is to engage the mind into what I'm doing to feel as I'm changing the tissue. And I don't know if the video is actually going to show up. So I'm actually demonstrating a massage stroke uh, going into the tissue. As I'm doing this, I want to engage the mind. So the mind actually tunes into here's what's going on in this tissue. And then the mind can say, oh, I can get this to let go. I can stop telling this muscle to contract. I can encourage this fascia to release to allow greater range of motion. And that's where the magic really, really happens. I think for, I don't know, I think most athletes um, tend to have a really, a, a much more fine-tuned mind-body connection than your average gym goer or your average person. Um, do you think that- I would definitely hold that that is uh, the, the typical athlete, uh, particularly your elite athletes are very, very aware of their body, much more than my office worker client who uh, spends their weekend sitting on the couch. Yeah, um, do you think that do you think that because of that, us athletes can actually get more benefit from massage than the average person? Because we can, for example, I know that I am able to relax certain muscles just by thinking about them. Like you really want to tense them up and some people stay, you know, they stay really tense and it's really hard for them to relax as you're trying to get it to relax. And we can actually like, like release on command type of thing. Does that give us an advantage? It does give an advantage. I'll say that uh, it's not just, 
it's not just the athletes that have that. Also, your yoga practitioners have that. Your intense meditators have that. Receiving massage is a skill. And certainly athletes and those who tune into their bodies are better able to perform that skill. But uh, it's not it's not entirely unique to athletes, but definitely receiving massage is a skill. There's no question about that. And being able to say, oh, they're in this muscle right now and I want to get this muscle to let go. Uh, and sometimes I'll also do call to action where I will make the client either contract the muscle that I'm trying to get to release, or I will have the client contract the opposing muscle to create a eccentric contraction, uh, either that or an eccentric movement, a passive eccentric movement of the muscle that I'm trying to get to release to stretch the muscle, to stretch the fascia. Uh, there's a number of different ways and I find different clients respond differently to that. Some people definitely need the, uh, the concentric call to action. Some people need the isometric contraction don't move it but at the same time contract it uh and uh some people need the elongation and some people don't actually need the movement some people uh just the passive massage receiving is enough though i find there is often a lot of benefit to actually having some movement on the part of the person receiving massage to feedback this is what we're trying to address yeah, I, I feel like um, for people who don't who don't get a lot of massage or who maybe have had one or two in their life, um, they have a very um, skewed uh, perception of what massage is really like. And I know that um, from working with you now for what, three, yeah, three plus years? years? Yeah, on a very regular basis. Certainly pre, pre-pandemic because we were... Uh, yeah, so I I were I've worked with you through all of the breast cancer treatments, mm-hmm. and that was that's been two years, and I I worked with you a little bit before that too. So I I know that the range of motion stuff is huge from you know doing radiation and me being really concerned about my shoulder mobility in that area and working with that and helping break up scar tissue um, so that the scar tissue didn't build up. Um, and, and, you know, as a bodybuilder, you need everything to be symmetrical. So making sure that I didn't have any asymmetry in my chest muscles and like massage, there's so many, so many uses for it. And I think that a lot of people think you just go there, you lay on the table and they just kind of, you know, there's like having music in the background, they do one of these and it's so much more than that. You're making me like, okay, and you're going to put your hand down and you drag it in. You're like, okay, now pull your hand up. And you're like, oh my God, that's intense. (laughs) As I'm, as I'm holding and anchoring the muscles that are pulling your hand down and you're trying to move your hand up. So yeah. I'm holding the muscles that pull your arm, pull your hand in deflection and I'm making you go into extension. And then when you get to full extension, I'm holding the muscles that hold you in extension and make you go into flexion. So you're actually stretching those muscles as I'm not letting you move it. I will um, make it publicly known that the worst one of those is the psoas. <laughs> Pick your knee up, pick your knee up. (laughs) Although it makes a big difference getting- It's huge. Mm -hmm. But I really want to emphasize this too, because some people get into, uh, here's another misconception, the fluff and buff. Uh, And that's a derogatory term often targeted towards the relaxation massage. That's good for like vacation. (laughs) It's great for vacation. And you know, some people- Some people stress is their major issue uh, that's going a little off topic. That could be a a subject of another time, the relaxation aspects of massage. Sometimes we just need to allow relaxation. Relaxation massage is therapeutic. Mm -hmm. And I like to be really, really clear about that. Relaxation massage is therapeutic. Yeah. Uh, Reiki is relaxation. Integrated energy therapy is relaxation. Uh, craniosacral therapy is kind of that blend between the meditative and the fascial. So it's kind of, it's kind of at that blend point. Uh, but it's all legit. So if relaxation massage is your jam, 
don't feel bad that relaxation massage is your jam. And some of that I certainly do. Uh, I don't do the classic Swedish. I, I, I kind of play in this blend between the meditative and the deep tissue. Uh, that's my ideal blend is between meditative and deep tissue. But if relaxation is your jam, then go get re re relaxation massage. The and problem is we fall, I'll fall asleep and then I don't get the benefits because I fall asleep. I need that yeah, little bit of like, I need that little bit of, uh, of ouch. There is this delicate thing of uh, losing connection to the body, though, as I often tell people, it's interesting that sleep, as we call it, of relaxation massage. Uh, I have had clients both for deep tissue and for meditative massage, esoteric work, uh, that Zen moment work, and also straight up relaxation massage, where they are apparently asleep, even snoring. Mm -hmm. And then I notice as soon as I mentally decide that the session is done and I start to pull my hands off the body, they come to full awake awareness and they're like, I guess we're done already. Now, I don't know about everybody else, but I know myself, if I'm asleep, uh, if I'm actually asleep, then it's gonna take a lot more than someone pulling their hands off of me to wake me up on cue. It is the best kind of sleep though. I'm, I'm not gonna lie. Occasionally I fall asleep for a minute and you'll always know cause I kind of twitch myself back away. But it's it's like a it's like probably 10 or 20 seconds at a whack. And it's almost like you're kind of in and out of consciousness but you're like still there. But if, if you can keep yourself awake through that it is the most restful thing. Like I wake up from I, I the massage and I'm like, yeah. yes took a oh, nap, yeah. but I did it because I felt the whole thing. It's glorious. It's interesting. I would argue, and I'm, uh, I'm contemplating at some point taking a training in hypnotherapy uh, and neuro-linguistic programming uh, to come to a better understanding of this. But my perspective is what people call the sleep induced by massage is not actually sleep. I think it is cl more closely related to states of meditation and or yes, a meditative state. As I was going to say, you can sleep. feel the table like sucking you in. <laughs> yeah, you just sink in. So good. So and that has its own restorative aspects towards active recovery because that is part of where we get the accelerated healing. I remember a number of years ago uh, talking with a uh, exercise physiologist. So this individual had a master's degree in exercise science and we were talking and they said, you know, the major benefit to anabolic steroids is the re improved recovery time. And the reality is you get that same improved recovery time, if not better from massage without all of the negative side effects of anabolic steroids. So getting massage can be that major part of your exercise routine that helps you to maintain higher states of health, higher recovery rates, so that you can work out at that greater intention. Yeah, I, so I wanted benefits. to tie this back in. So why would someone who does CrossFit, someone who does yoga, someone who works out hard, any kind of any, an athlete to me is somebody who trains consistently, persistently over a long period of time mm -hmm. that is, has some kind of a progressive program. And so someone like that, there's a lot of athletes out there. Don't mind my dog. He doesn't know about personal space. Um, yeah. He, you know, why would someone like that want to look at massage and how frequently should they do it? So let's start with uh, why do they want to look at massage? First and foremost, massage before your exercise helps to give you feedback as to where am I in space? There is a, kinesthesi a kinesthesiology, kinesiological feedback, uh, I can words, uh, of 
where am I in space? And this is part of also the benefit to pregnant women is people are changing their shape and where am I in space? Mm. So it improves your awareness to here's where my arm is, here's where I'm going. It improves that feedback of, okay, my proprioceptive awareness of where am I and how much stretches, stretches on the tissue. We also increase the stretch response in the tissue. So the mobility of the tissue so that the body can actually have that degree of range of motion. So you're less likely to tear muscle, tendon, huh. ligament. Oh yeah. I never would have thought of getting it. I always feel like once I get my massage, I can, I'm not doing anything active for the rest of the day because I want my body to like absorb the benefits. But I never thought that maybe I should do it before I work out as like part of a warm up. It's a great thing to do before workout. And it's a long standing benefit to massage to increase your awareness of where am I in space, increasing cool. proprioceptive awareness of where am I. Uh, so that's pre massage. It also, if you do immediately before the workout. So let's say uh, for, the, for the elite runner, for the elite cyclist, for the elite power lifter. Uh, that's me. <laughs> it increases your. Uh, awareness of where am I? It increases that blood flow. So it could be part of your warm up routine to get massage. And yeah, that's so why that I can't roll. have you with me all the time. But part of my warm up routine is foam rolling, which does a similar thing, which is just myofascial release and just press, putting pressure on the fascia and the muscles to bring blood flow. Now, of course, part of the challenge with foam rolling is there is a tendency by some people to say, I can go a little deeper because you're controlling it. So they go too hard. And if you are having a pain response, if someone is having an intense pain response that they are holding their breath through it uh, to tolerate the pain and pressure, you're probably doing tissue damage. You're probably going too hard. You're probably doing tissue damage. I certainly understand wanting to warm things up, great to warm things up. Be aware of working too hard. That's what the treadmill is for. The massage going too hard on you. Likewise, you know, uh, Braston, if people are going to physical therapy, uh, talking with physical therapists, uh, some of them are saying, yes, Braston has a reputation for leaving people bruised and battered. And these physical therapists are saying, if people are coming out of Braston bruised and battered, they are doing Graston far too hard. You right. should not have the intense bruising. Okay. I got some Graston for a hand issue, not related to massage or related to a damn cell phone. Yes. Okay. So bad. There's no bruising. There's no achiness. Uh, it's good. Okay. So, uh, and then post-workout post-workout, we arguably it's believed that we change the flow of blood and lymph. So we're increasing flow of blood and lymph, increasing blood circulation. We are inducing a relaxation state. And for a skilled therapist, we are inducing that relaxation state slowly and gently. So you're not going from intense power lifting, running, racing workout into passed out. You're getting eased back into it slowly. So your nervous system gears down to reduce the risk of cramps to reduce the risk of spasm, to release some of the spasms that might be happening, release any fascial adhesions, reduce scar tissue buildup, because as people do exercise, we sometimes tear things. As we tear things, now we have to recover from that. So it's providing some of that recovery and gearing back down to whatever normal life is. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, for the elite athlete, you know, I've got some clients that are elite power lifters and they're lifting three, four days mm -hmm. a week, uh, doing these intense workouts several days a week to uh, either power lift or for bodybuilders, for professional bodybuilding. Uh, so being mindful of that and helping with that recovery and gearing back down and they're gonna go back into their workout tomorrow. It doesn't preclude that. Uh, 
it can also reduce trigger points. So in the long-term phases, we get into, oh, okay, here's someone who exercises a lot on a regular basis, uh, or even somebody who doesn't exercise at all, they develop fascial adhesions, myofascial trigger points. Uh, there's some debate as to, are myofascial adhesions real? I would say yes. Are my oh, you can feel points? them. Yeah, we do feel them. Uh, and I certainly have, uh, uh, I had, was recently told by a bodybuilder that uh, he noticed uh, from my work, uh, I was I focused more on one side of the body at the start and then went to the other side of the body at the end. And because I was more tired, I didn't work the other side as much. And there was an inch difference in the pop of the lats after the massage from right to left. Yes, so, um, you can't have it. that. Yeah, <laughs> you need to address that. And uh, so I haven't gotten feedback as to whether or not we balance that with the most recent session. Uh, but that was certainly the intent to balance that with the real, most recent session and get the pop back into the left uh, to get that balance. Uh, but certainly we release the fascial adhesions. There's also the trigger points. So for those who aren't familiar, fascial adhesions are saying that here's one layer of tissue, here's another layer of tissue, there's a layer of fascia in between, and that layer of fascia can get really, really slick and slippery. Uh, for those really, really uh, less acquainted, think like the boneless, skinless chicken breast, in that white film on the chicken breast, that when you look at that and you look at the fibers of the pink and you see that white in between the fibers of the pink, that's all fascia. So when it's liquid, it's nice and fluid and it allows a gliding between. But sometimes what happens is the fascia gets thick, cold, sticky, yeah. and now it doesn't allow and it just sticks. It just holds. Uh, Sounds like my IT bands. Sounds like IT bands. <laughs> and, and I was just recently listening to, because I'm, I'm a firm one for continuing education, and I was recently listening to a podcast where they said that current, uh, current body worker, massage therapist, pain therapist theory uh, in the US is saying the IT band is too thick, it's too hard, can't actually change the consistency of the IT band. Uh, as one orthopedic massage therapist uh, trainer uh, teaches, uh, the IT band takes 1,700 pounds of pressure to change the pressure, the change the consistency of the IT band. So if you take the IT band and surgically remove it from the body and lay it out on the asphalt and run it over with the steamroller, you're still not going to change the consistency of the IT band because the, I, the steamroller only applies 1,500 pounds. Wow. And you need 1,700 pounds to change the consistency of the IT. Well, I don't know about that, but I can take about five pounds of pressure on my IT band and it hurts, so. It hurts. Uh, so from that theory, my argument is address the tensor fascia lata, address gluteus maximus, those being the two mus muscles that insert into the IT band, pulling tension on the IT band. So if you release the tension that is pulling, if you release this end that's pulling, then as you release the tension, now the IT band goes to slack. Uh, but apparently in Europe, they have a different perspective where it's actually increasing the awareness. So now not using more than that five pounds, trying to force consistency change in the IT band, but gently working the IT band and waiting for the brain to get involved and to say, oh, we can release this tissue. Yeah. Because it's actually not well known. Uh, it's known by me and some other body workers, but it's often not spoken about. There is actually a slow contractile function inside of connective tissue. And it's called connective tissue creep, where connective tissue will ever so slowly pull things towards the center. And that's where getting massage is helpful. Nice. to reduce the creep and get things moving again. Yeah. Uh, now, the second part of your question was how often? That's a phenomenal question. Uh, 
here is the answer that I often give people because I've certainly heard people give the every day or every week or every month or whatever. Here's the answer I like to give people on frequency for massage. If you're going for massage, notice how you feel on your way in. When you've gotten a massage, then notice how you feel on your way out. Notice the difference between on the way in, pre-massage, on the way out, post-massage. And when you feel more pre-massage, pre more post-massage than you did pre-massage, if you're feeling like, oh, I'm starting to feel that stiffiness, that achiness, like I was pre-massage coming back, then that's the time that you really want to, on your current usage pattern, start thinking about getting another massage, probably a little bit before that. Now, how often is that? That's gonna depend upon another number of things. How do you exercise? Are you doing yoga? Are you doing walking? Are you doing intense lifting? Are you doing running? Are you doing uh, CrossFit? Are you doing, are you spending a lot of time in an office job? Because that also has an effect. Also, how are you eating? There's a huge difference between eating uh, baked sweet potato and eating potato chips. What or do you mean? It's not the same thing all this time, Jason. French fries. Uh, there's a huge difference between my dinner tonight's going to include some quinoa and some broccoli and some chicken. There's a huge difference between that and having rice or having pasta, having bread. Uh, and there's nothing wrong and certainly certain body types handle it better. I don't seem to handle bread very well. I love bread, but my body kind of goes, uh, and it makes me more achy. So awareness of that. Also thinking about how much water am I drinking? If I'm drinking a lot of water, Come on. Mm -hmm. if I'm drinking a lot of water, fortunately I had water before we started this and I'm gonna have some water pretty soon. Uh, but if I'm drinking a lot of water, that's gonna help me a lot. If I'm drinking a lot of soda or beer or alcohol uh, or coffee. That Anything that's a diuretic. It doesn't have the same effect. So being mindful of, these other things are going to change. Am I stretching on a regular basis? Also an awareness and absolute love massage. I want people to get more massages, certainly. And certainly I enjoy when people get massages for me because that's my lifestyle. That's how I pay my bills. Uh, however, also an awareness that there are other adjunct modalities that we can use. Uh, yoga, stretching, uh, learning how to exercise correctly. So go to a personal trainer who's going to look at your form and look at your technique. Corrective exercise, which some personal trainers do, and also physical therapy does. Uh, manual manipulation, such as massage, such as chiropractic. How about acupuncture? Talk to a nutritionist. Talk to a naturopathic doctor about what are you taking in. All of these things form a constellation of effects. Ayurvedic medicine is another phenomenal form yep. of medicine. Yep. So pay attention and listen to your body. When your body says, you know, maybe I shouldn't put another plate on today. My body feels like that's that's enough. Then maybe it's a really good idea to take a break from that. And yep. eat back. Really tune into that and pay attention to what am I doing to my body? Notice all of that. Yeah, there's a lot that goes into it for sure. But I think... I think from what, what we've talked about today, we can all see that you um, are very diverse in your massage techniques, that's for sure. And you you have a ton of knowledge. And so anybody from the elite athlete to someone who just wants a relaxation massage or energy work, you you can run the gamut. But for, for those of you who work out a lot, um, if you are going to put the money into a trainer, you're putting the money into the gym, you're putting the money into your equipment, into your sneakers, into your gym bag, into your cute gym clothes, into your all this stuff, you got to put the money into yourself as well for recovery. And I know that most of us are really busy and we don't have a ton of time and our, our workouts are already really tight. And you know, we really should spend another 10 or 15 minutes after every workout doing mobility work and foam rolling and doing all of these things. And we tend to kind of skip over it. So at least regularly, a once a, every other week, once a week, once a month even, 
get a massage, put it on the calendar, make a date with yourself to, you know, give yourself a break. Because if you work really hard, your body deserves a break and it deserves to recover appropriately. And I know massage has been crucial in my recovery. The research definitely shows that getting a regular massage is more beneficial than an irregular massage schedule. Yep. It doesn't actually say much about frequency. So if for one person, regular might be every single week. Uh, I certainly got my massage yesterday. Uh, and I, I get mine on Friday. Excellent. I'll see you then. Uh, I have some people who get massages every week. I have some people who mix it up. I have some clients every two weeks, every three weeks, every six weeks. Uh, but here's another key. Massage is, there is an expense involved in part because your typical massage therapist, myself included, I can really only do about five hours of massage a day before I'm just spent. It's so intense on the focus. It's actually less about physical exertion than it is on the focus. It's the mental and emotional exertion that really drains. Mm -hmm. uh, I can really only do about five hours of massage a day. I notice when I do a sixth, my posture starts to slip. I'm not using the ideal posture, which increases my risk of injury. Uh, and I can only do about 20 hours of massage a week. So that's why my rates are what they are. Uh, I'm not trying to price gouge. I'm just trying to make a reasonable living. And I deserve a reasonable living with all of my education and background. Uh, and other massage therapists that are listening to this, consider this as well. You know, Take a look at your rates and say, am I providing a reasonable standard of living for myself? Uh, and it's worth it. It is worth it. It's absolutely worth it. So if your standard of living from your exercise, from your job, from your everything, uh, only allows a massage every other week, every six weeks, every four weeks, every three months. If regular, if a regular massage for you in the affordable and taking care of myself is every three months or every four months, a couple times a year, that's regular. That's better than not getting massages at all. And it's certainly better than getting a massage every week for three weeks. Yeah. You're much better off to get a massage on whatever schedule that works for you. So choose the schedule that works well for you and stick to that schedule. Be mindful of that schedule of, okay, how do I feel pre-massage? How do I feel post-massage? And maybe your massage tools, your, your thumper, your uh, vibrational massage tools, a massage stone, uh, a foam roller, a maybe those are your strategies to, to bridge the gap. That's great. Use that. Uh, but really think about, okay, what frequency of massage works for me and tune into how do I feel after the massage? How do I feel pre-massage? Uh, and be aware that no matter how good the you know mechanical massage chair is or the mechanical thumper thing is, it lacks the awareness and there's also this factor too that's often forgotten. Sometimes our pain is not coming from where are we feel our pain. And a skilled yeah. massage therapist is able to take a look and be like, ooh, I have seen this before. And this back pain, if we don't release the hamstrings and the quads, this back pain is going to continue. If we don't yep. release uh, the glutes, then this back pain is going to continue. Or if we don't release the neck. And I have seen times that headaches were coming from the ankle. It's crazy. So certainly we need to address where the pain is felt, but we also need to address other areas of the body too. Uh, I personally like to focus on where the issues are. And if I'm not finding anything, then I'm going to ignore it. So someone who comes in for a massage and says, yeah, I feel headaches uh, and it gets worse when I do this. That's part of why I'm tuning into that. Tune into what makes it better, what makes it worse, that kind of clues me in as to what's involved in that movement. That gives me a clue. Uh, if I go to someone's feet, if my intuition says go to the feet and I go to their feet and it relieves the headache, I make a note of that. And I remember, oh, okay, their feet get involved in their headaches. If I go to their feet for whatever other reason, maybe because my last client needed that, and I think, oh, let's try this again. 
and I don't find anything going on in the feet that does anything about the headaches, I also know that and I say, oh, okay, let's, let's, let's address uh, other areas. So it's that awareness that you're paying for. You're paying for that expertise, just like going for personal training. You're paying for expertise. Yep. Uh, I go to, for personal training, I'm paying for somebody to one, give me motivation to do burpees because burpees suck. Uh, or mountain climbers, because mountain climbers suck. <laughs> Having flashbacks, that's Jesus. That's the weakness for, of mine, pull-ups suck. Uh, but giving me the motivation to actually do the thing that I don't want to do because they're not fun. Uh, but also to watch my posture and position so that I'm doing the exercise correctly. Yeah. Uh, likewise, for getting a massage, your partner doesn't have the trained hands. Your friend who's a good amateur massage therapist doesn't have the trained hands. They may have a lot of natural talent, but they don't necessarily have that level of training. Uh, yeah. Nor do they have the strength and endurance because I can do a 90 minute massage and then have that client leave and then do another 90 minute massage and then have that client Crazy. leave and take Crazy a 20 or 30 minute break and do a two hour massage and I'm fine. And I'm working the whole time. The average, uh, your average friend is going to go for about two, three minutes before their hands get tired. Yes, you've got, you've got, you've got a very um, used and mature uh, since two, 2004, you've been doing that. So uh, when I had, when I went for physical therapy, the physical therapist said, yeah, your hands are jacked. <laughs> 17 years. So for all of our athletes out there, I just want to reiterate um, that you recover faster from your harder workouts when you do something other than just sit around or just stretch. Some kind of a low-grade activity like walking or swimming, very gentle yoga mo movement style, um, or a massage, and that's what we're here for today. Um, and it can help reduce lactic acid, acid buildup, eliminate toxins, um, keep you flexible, reduce soreness, increase blood flow. And uh, in some cases, help you maintain your exercise routine, because if you're feeling good after, you're much more likely to repeat the process than if you're sore for 10 days and then you are like, yeah, this lifestyle is not for me. So again, I wanted to thank Jason um, from Rye Therapeutic Massage. And Jason, if you have any closing comments, please feel free. And all of your uh, contact information will be um, in the body of the post. So I do want to be cautious of saying toxins. Uh the research is not really supporting that we're removing toxins from the body. We often like to say it, it's a common myth in both of our industries, uh, and that's okay. We, we, uh, we're definitely increasing blood flow and we're gonna move metabolic waste products out and bring in fresh nutrients. Uh, that's what I meant, that yeah, one. That one, uh, but uh, anybody who's looking for massage, massage, rye, NH, M-A-S-S-A-G-E-R-Y-E-N-H at gmail.com. You can also go to Google and look up Rye Therapeutic Massage. Uh, there is a Rye Massage in New York that will sometimes show up, uh, but it's uh, Rye Therapeutic Massage. I'm in Rye, New Hampshire, uh, right on the sea coast. Uh, yeah, and we'll have all of your contact information listed so excellent. they can just link right to your page. Excellent. Awesome. And, uh, if people have questions, I also like to answer questions. So if people have questions, I'm happy to answer questions and be a resource and help uh, people find uh, people that are good for them. Sometimes people will say, oh, massage can't help that. And I'll look and say, mm, you know what? Actually, I think massage can be more helpful than you think. Massage uh, can help so when people have those questions, feel free to reach out. Also, if you've uh, had the experience of massage therapists, I think the massage therapist is working too hard. You can also confirm that, but please, 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 if you do go for massage with any massage therapist uh, and you're finding yourself holding your breath to tolerate the pressure, ask the therapist to lighten up. If the massage therapist doesn't lighten up to something that's more tolerable, then tell them to stop because they should not be working that hard. They should not be beating you up. Uh, you know, uh, if you feel after massage, like, oh, I feel the next day, like I had a big workout soreness and you happen to, that happens to be your jam, then that's okay. Uh, but you should not be sore for days. 
No, she words from the wise. Work smarter, not, not harder. harder. And on that note, I want to thank you again, Jason, for being uh, with us. And um, I look forward to uh, doing some more chats with you about some of the other stuff that you do. Thank you. Maybe we'll talk about meditation next time. Yes, please. Thank you very much, Candice. You have a great day. You too.